In this video, I wanted to go ahead and derive the characteristic function for the case of a normal random variable, because I'm just a little bit anxious that we actually just stated at the end of the last video that the characteristic function for a normal random variable z is just defined as being equal to e to the minus t squared over two. And I just stated that without any proof. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and try and prove this result. First of all, a bit of a disclaimer. This material is a little bit more advanced than that in some of the other videos. It's gonna involve a degree of complex analysis. Um, so if you're not confident with that particular subject, then I perhaps suggest that, you know, you can watch the video, but don't, don't sort of follow it too closely or don't get too sort of head up if you can't understand everything. But yeah, we're gonna use uh, complex analysis to try and derive the characteristic function of a normal random variable. First of all, in order to do this, we need to know what the probability density function is for a normal random variable. Well, the probability density function of a normal random variable is just equal to one over root two pi times e to the minus x squared divided by two. Let's just make that x a bit neater. Um, and this is the sort of probability density function for a standard random normal, I should say as well. Okay, so now we sort of have everything we need to sort of proceed and think about finding the characteristic function for our variable x, which is a standard random normal variable. And we know that the characteristic function is defined as being equal to the expectation of e to the i t x, if I'm parameterizing in terms of this parameter t. Furthermore, we know that using the law of the unconscious statistician, that I could actually just get this result quite easily by integrating from minus infinity to plus infinity of e to the i t x times one over two pi, or one over root two pi rather, times e to the minus x squared over two integrated across x. So looking at this integral to start with, you might just think that, well, this looks pretty similar to that which we might have if we were just considering the moment generating function. And if you don't know what the moment generating function is, it's just sort of this whole expression, but without the i in there. So it's just a sort of the um, expectation of, um, in this case, e to the tx rather than e to the i tx. So you might think that it's similarly easy just to do this integral. Uh, and you could just sort of do it by substitution. But the problem here is the fact that you actually have this i. This i complicates matters, and it actually means that in order to do this integral properly, we actually need to use complex analysis. So in order to sort of get this integral into a shape whereby we can do some sort of complex contour um, integral, we need to sort of get it into a particular form. And I'm gonna do a bit of a trick. So I'm gonna pre-multiply this whole thing by e to the minus t squared over two divided by root two pi. And note that this thing that I'm pre-multiplying by is actually the result which we expect to get at the end. So there's, there's, there is some sort of reason in this trick. Uh, and because we pre-multiplied by this sort of e to the minus t squared over two, we need to include a term which kind of gets rid of this term which is just e to the t squared over two, because when these two terms multiply, I just get left with e to the zero, which is just one. Okay, so that's the second term. The third part of it is gonna be just what we had originally, which is e to the i t x times e to the minus x squared over two integrated across x. And now because we've got some sort of parts which don't actually involve um, x, namely this part, we can just take this part out of the integral. So we're just gonna be left on the outside with e to the minus t squared over two divided by root two pi. And then we're just gonna be left with our original integral. But if we look at this sort of term here, if you can make out what I'm doing here, this sort of second part here, then the actual powers are just a quadratic. And the quadratic itself is just minus x minus i t all squared. So we can actually just write this as e to the minus x minus i t all squared divided by two integrated across x. Okay, so now we're in a state where we can do some sort of transformation, we can do some sort of substitution to allow us to do this contour integral. And that's what I'm gonna be doing in the next video. I'll see you then.